Since 1970, the global abundance of oceanic sharks and rays has declined by a staggering 71%, 137 with an 18-fold increase in relative fishing pressure. Although sustainable shark fisheries are theoretically possible, industrial fisheries targeting large groups can be characterized by a boom and bust trajectory that has decimated crucial species. 138. Since 1970, the global abundance of oceanic sharks and rays has declined by a staggering 71%, 137 with an 18-fold increase in relative fishing pressure. Although sustainable shark fisheries are theoretically possible, industrial fisheries targeting elasmo branks can be characterized by a boom and bust trajectory that has decimated crucial species. More than 96% of the reported blue shark catches in the North Atlantic are caught by pelagic longliners. These surface longliners carry a line often measuring more than 100 kilometers, targeting just sharks, or sharks and swordfish, though to me usually accounts for a minor portion of catches. Vessels longer than 24 meters that want to fish for tuna or swordfish in the Atlantic, Pacific or Indian Oceans must register in these with most 140 and in caught fisheries, vessels over 20 meters must register. Drifting long line consists of a main line or mother line kept near the surface, surface long line, that targets large pelagic fish like swordfish or sharks. Using regularly spaced floats and relatively long smooths, branches, with baited hooks, the gear is suspended about 60 to 100 meters below the surface. Surface long lines can be huge, from 20 kilometers long to more than 100.
there are currently no regulations limiting long line size or hook usage in the Atlantic because it depends on the target species and the RFMO that manages the area. The order regulates the size of the main line and the number of hooks that can be used, but these measures are only applicable through it caught in the Mediterranean. Baited hooks are attached to the nets at intervals to attract the target species. Long lines can be set for pelagic, midwater, or demersal, bottom, fishing, depending on the target species. Without careful management, long line fisheries can have unintended interactions with non-target fish, seabirds, and other marine life. Because of this, to become MSC certified, they are often required to make improvements to their monitoring programs, and to mitigate interactions with non-target species. MSC certified longline operations, such as those fishing for Patagonian toothfish in the Southern Ocean, have employed measures such as weighted longlines that sink more quickly, and tori lines that scare away seabirds. Some have even made changes to fishing times to avoid interaction with endangered, threatened and protected, ETP, species. With a maximum mainline length of 30 nautical miles, about 55 kilometers, the number of hooks and their minimum size is determined by the target species. For example, swordfish, 2,500 hooks, albacore tuna, 5,000 hooks, bluefin tuna, 2,000 hooks. However, in the Atlantic, there is no limitation whatsoever on line length or hook usage. Fishing for sharks is an exhilarating experience because these apex predators are as tough as they look. Sharks are some of the oldest animals on earth, and their ability to survive makes them difficult to catch. These toothy fish grow huge and provide memories that will last a lifetime. If you want to land one of these beasts, here's what you need to know. Sharks are unique animals that have evolved over millions of years to survive. They're also part of the group of cartilaginous fish, including rays and skates, none of which have bones. Like most apex predators, sharks are carnivores that eat by actively hunting for prey or scavenging. With over 440 species of sharks inhabiting the world's oceans, they can be small or well over 10 feet long. Sharks primarily live in temperate and tropical waters around the world, inhabiting coastal waters and reefs. However, sharks travel thousands of miles crossing through frigid and tropical waters to find food. Depending on the time of year, sharks can be found almost anywhere around the world. Sharks inhabit waters from shallow coastal areas to deep offshore reefs. The most widely used technique to catch sharks is bottom fishing, which is perfect for anglers of all levels. Bottom fishing consists of dropping bait to the seafloor and waiting for a bite. A typical setup is cut bait on a circle hook and a heavy weight. The weight keeps the bait near the bottom, where it leaves a scent trail that attracts sharks and other bottom feeders. Heavy tackle is required to haul in a shark, 
with stout rods, reels, and wire leaders being the only things that give anglers the advantage. The most common bait for shark fishing is cut bait, but the type of bait varies from location to location. Popular choices for cut bait include bonito, false albacore, squid, and bait fish like mullet. All of the baits work well because they create large scent trails that are especially effective for drawing in sharks. With sharks being found around the world, you can take a trip almost anywhere and find a fishing charter that targets them. If you want to stay in the US the best places to target sharks are along the Atlantic and Gulf Coast. Shark fishing can be intense, and if the danger of handling a shark alone is too much, check out our shark fishing guides who will take care of everything for you. Humans have relied on the bounty of the sea for sustenance and livelihoods for centuries. However, the age-old practice of fishing has rapidly evolved as the global population continues to grow and the demand for seafood escalates. One of the most traditional fishing techniques that has gained attention is long-line fishing. This method is widely recognized as one of the most natural, responsible techniques, benefiting both fish quality and ocean sustainability. Join us on this journey beneath the ocean's surface to learn about longline fishing and uncover why it's considered the future of sustainable fishing practices. Longline fishing, also known as the hook and line, is a commercial fishing technique used to catch a variety of fish and seafood species. It involves the use of a long, horizontal main fishing line, which can be several miles in length, to which numerous baited hooks are attached at regular intervals. As the Marine Stewardship Council explains, long lines can be set for pelagic, midwater, or demersal, bottom, fishing, depending on the target species. While this is just a brief overview of what long line fishing is, it's also helpful to understand how exactly this technique works. Long line fishing is used to target a wide range of species, including cod, haddock, tuna, swordfish, halibut, and various types of bottom dwelling fish. It is can be employed in both offshore and deep sea environments. Setting the long line, a long line fishing vessel deploys the main fishing line into the water. By most estimates, the average long line in the United States is 28 miles long. The line may be set near the ocean floor or suspended at a specific depth to target certain species of fish. Baited hooks. Baited hooks are attached at regular intervals along the line. According to NOAA Fisheries, longline bait can include squid, mackerel, and sardines, though this can depend on what appeals to the target species. Soak. The long line is left in the water for some time, allowing the baited hooks to attract and catch fish. The duration of the soaking period can vary based on fishing regulations, the behavior of the target species, and number of hooks deployed. Retrieval. The long line is retrieved by the commercial fishing vessel. Fishermen carefully pull in the line, removing the caught fish from the individual hooks as they go. Processing. The fresh catch can be processed on board the vessel or in an onshore facility once the boat has landed. At North Coast Seafoods, our fishermen utilize cutting-edge technology and techniques like flash freezing on board the boat in order to preserve seafood at its peak quality and condition. As you can see, longline fishing offers a more precise, meticulous approach when compared to other commercial fishing methods such as trawling or dredging. 
This is largely why it is considered to be one of the best and most sustainable fishing techniques that can still be conducted on a large scale. Longline fishing, when practiced responsibly and sustainably, can offer several benefits. Let's take a closer look at some of them. Compared to other fishing techniques, longline fishing causes minimal disruptions to the environment. Trawling, in particular, has been shown to destroy the natural seafloor habitat by dragging a large net across the seabed. This method can be very harmful to the environment as it impacts many natural habitats and animals who live on the seafloor. Longline fishing, on the other hand, does not interfere with the ocean floor. The lines simply soak in the water without causing a major impact on underwater environments. The Marine Stewardship Council MSC, also offers a certification for longline operations that are committed to improving their monitoring programs and mitigating interactions with non-target species. Bycatch, or the unintentional catch of non-target species, is always a concern in the fishing industry. Longline fishing has significantly lower levels of bycatch, especially compared to trawling which uses a large net to indiscriminately catch fish. NOAA Fisheries shares that current bycatch reduction measures include the use of circle hooks. These hooks are, as the name suggests, circular and have a smaller opening that reduces the likelihood of turtles and marine mammals ingesting hooks or being caught. The experts emphasize that circle hooks used in combination with finfish bait like mackerel significantly reducing sea turtles. pembuangan bagian dalam perut dan insangnya tuna A drifting long line consists of a main line kept near the surface or at a certain depth by means of regularly spaced floats and with relatively long snoods with baited hooks evenly spaced on the main line Drifting long lines may be of considerable length Some drifting long lines are set vertically each line hanging from a float at the surface Long line are used mainly to catch large big eye tuna, albacore tuna, and yellowfin tuna in tropical waters, as well as northern bluefin tuna and southern bluefin tuna, swordfish, marlins in temperate waters. The depth where the hooks are set in the water column is a crucial element. This depth in which the long line is settled can be regulated mainly by modifying the intervals of the main line between float lines and partially by adjusting the length of float line and all the speed of shooting, to a lesser extent, by modifying the length of the branch lines. Industrial tuna longliners are usually large vessel with length ranging between 30 and 70 meters. The basic requirements of a tuna longliner, industrial type, are adequate speed to reach far away fishing grounds, enough autonomy, fuel, water, accommodation of crew, etc., capacity for operating in the high sea, sometimes very rough seas at cold temperature, facility for very efficient freezing storage, to attain extremely cold temperature under 45 degrees Celsius, to keep the highly valued tuna for months together, suitable deck arrangement and equipment, protection of crew from rough weather and sea conditions, machineries for shooting and hauling up long lines quickly and proper storage facilities for keeping the fishing gears and accessories. These large specialized vessels can stay away from their home ports for 10 to 24 months. If the vessel's cruise is less than a month, the tuna can, in principle, be stopped directly in isolated fish hold. However, nowadays the large commercial tuna longline vessels used to stay at sea for months, sometimes up to almost a whole year. In such situation, the catch has to be frozen, in perfect conditions for maintaining top quality for the product. 
hence it is necessary to extract blood, pre-cool, freeze and install fish in a store at a temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius to minus 60 degrees Celsius. It is very essential to freeze the fish meat to such a low temperature so as to retain the quality and color of the meat for a very long period. Tuna long lining is a passive type of fishing technique making use of lines with baited hooks as fishing gear. Midwater long lining allow catches of fish in midwater and near surface, while casting and retrieving. Midwater long lining for tuna, which would be originated from Japan, is now a widely used method for catching tunas in the depth range from the subsurface up to 300 meters, the most common method with purse staining, the later being more appropriate when tuna are grouped in large schools and, normally, not deeper than 100 meters. A typical set consists of 200 or more units or baskets, connected together, with a buoy at each connection, and a total of about 3,000 hooks. The details of the fishing operations, maneuvers, given below are included only as examples since they reflect specific conditions, vessel size and equipment, crew and fishery conditions. Humans have relied on the bounty of the sea for sustenance and livelihoods for centuries. However, the age-old practice of fishing has rapidly evolved as the global population continues to grow and the demand for seafood escalates. One of the most traditional fishing techniques that has gained attention is, longline fishing. This method is widely recognized as one of the most natural, responsible techniques, benefiting both fish quality and ocean sustainability. Join us on this journey beneath the ocean's surface to learn about longline fishing and uncover why it's considered the future of sustainable fishing practices. Longline fishing, also known as hook and line, is a commercial fishing technique used to catch a variety of fish and seafood species. It involves the use of a long, horizontal main fishing line, which can be several miles in length, to which numerous baited hooks are attached at regular intervals. As the Marine Stewardship Council explains, long lines can be set for pelagic, midwater, or demersal, bottom, fishing, depending on the target species. While this is just a brief overview of what long line fishing is, it's also helpful to understand how exactly this technique works. Long line fishing is used to target a wide range of species, including cod, haddock, tuna, swordfish, halibut, and various types of bottom dwelling fish. It is can be employed in both offshore and deep sea environments. Setting the long line. A long line fishing vessel deploys the main fishing line into the water. By most estimates, the average long line in the United States is 28 miles long. The line may be set near the ocean floor or suspended at a specific depth to target certain species of fish. Baited hooks. Baited hooks are attached at regular intervals along the line. According to NOAA Fisheries, longline bait can include squid, mackerel, and sardines, though this can depend on what appeals to the target species. Soak. The long line is left in the water for some time, allowing the baited hooks to attract and catch fish. The duration of the soaking period can vary based on fishing regulations, the behavior of the target species, and number of hooks deployed. Retrieval. The long line is retrieved by the commercial fishing vessel. Fishermen carefully pull in the line, removing the caught fish from the individual hooks as they go. Processing. The fresh catch can be processed on board the vessel or in an onshore facility once the boat has landed. At North Coast Seafoods, our fishermen utilize cutting-edge technology and techniques like flash freezing on board the boat in order to preserve seafood at its peak quality and condition. As you can see, longline fishing offers a more precise, meticulous approach when compared to other commercial fishing methods such as trawling or dredging. This is largely why it is considered to be one of the best and most sustainable fishing techniques that can still be conducted on a large scale. Longline fishing, when practiced responsibly and sustainably, can offer several benefits. 
Let's take a closer look at some of them. Compared to other fishing techniques, longline fishing causes minimal disruptions to the environment. Trawling, in particular, has been shown to destroy the natural seafloor habitat by dragging a large net across the seabed. This method can be very harmful to the environment as it impacts many natural habitats and animals who live on the seafloor. Longline fishing, on the other hand, does not interfere with the ocean floor. The lines simply soak in the water without causing a major impact on underwater environments. The Marine Stewardship Council MSC, also offers a certification for longline operations that are committed to improving their monitoring programs and mitigating interactions with non-target species. Bycatch, or the unintentional catch of non-target species, is always a concern in the fishing industry. Longline fishing has significantly lower levels of bycatch, especially compared to trawling which uses a large net to indiscriminately catch fish. NOAA Fisheries shares that current bycatch reduction measures include the use of circle hooks. These hooks are, as the name suggests, circular and have a smaller opening that reduces the likelihood of turtles and marine mammals ingesting hooks or being caught. The experts emphasize that circle hooks used in combination with finfish bait like mackerel significantly reducing sea turtles. Balik ke laptop. Bluefin tuna These fish are the largest members of the tuna family, and their meat is some of the most prized in the world. But let's be honest, bluefin tuna are really hard to catch. Bluefin tuna is a type of fish that's so delicious and prized that it can cost hundreds of dollars per pound in some parts of the world. That's because bluefin tunas are one of the biggest, fastest, and most sought-after fish in the ocean. Bluefin tunas live in temperate waters all around the world, and they're very popular in sushi restaurants for their tender meat and rich flavor. But how do you go about catching one? Is it even possible? If so, what do you need to know before you get started? In this article, we'll give you everything you need to know about catching bluefin tuna so that you can increase your chances while also protecting these magnificent creatures from overfishing. In fact, it's hard to say what makes it so difficult to catch them. The most common answer is that they're fast-moving creatures and they tend to inhabit deep waters that are hard to access on a regular basis. Plus, even if you do manage to find a school of bluefin tuna, they tend to be pretty elusive when they're caught off guard by human activity near their habitat. But don't give up. With some research, patience and maybe some luck, you might just be able to catch your very own bluefin tuna. We've all seen the pictures of a bluefin tuna on the internet, but what do you really need to know about catching them? In this article, we'll cover everything you'll need to know in order to catch your first bluefin tuna. And because they are so large and have such a high metabolism rate, they need to eat constantly. The bluefin has always been a prized catch among fishermen, but because they're so large, it can be difficult to reel them in once you've hooked them. The lifespan of a bluefin tuna can reach up to 40 years. This is a very long time for a fish, and it is one of the reasons why they are so valuable. The large size of this species makes them easy targets for fishermen who want to catch them in order to sell them on the market or use them as bait. 
the fact that they live such long lives means that they are harder to catch than smaller species, which is why they are so sought after by those who want to be able to catch them easily. The bluefin tuna is one of the fastest fishes in the ocean. Because of that, this makes it one of the reasons why it is a challenge to catch them. If you find yourself wanting to catch the bluefin tuna, you certainly should be prepared. The bluefin tuna are strong predators. They have been known to eat other fish, squid and all other sea creatures, and they can grow up to 10 feet long. They use their speed and agility to catch their prey, as well as their size to protect themselves from predators. The bluefin tuna has many predators, including sharks and other large fish. By catch, defined here as the incidental take of non-target species, has been identified as one of the most significant issues affecting both the management and conservation of marine fisheries. The type and amount of bycatch associated with individual fisheries depends on several things, including gear design, e.g., hook type, fishing method, e.g., time of day of setting, and the spatial overlap between fishing effort and individual species distribution. Long lines have been identified as having one of the highest bycatch rates for many species. This incidental bycatch is considered to be a global threat to long-lived animals such as sharks, seabirds, sea turtles, and marine mammals. Sharks, sea turtles, seabirds, and marine mammals are highly susceptible to incidental capture and tuna fisheries. Many of these species are distributed across large geographic areas and therefore have a large overlap with tuna fishing grounds, cross geopolitical boundaries, making them difficult to manage, and have life history characteristics that make them especially vulnerable to fishing pressure. The life history characteristics of sharks, sea turtles, seabirds, and marine mammals include attaining sexual maturity at a late age, having a long reproductive cycle, and producing a small number of young. In addition to these bycatch species, small and or undersized tuners and billfish are often discarded after capture and therefore constitute additional bycatch in longline fisheries. The bycatch of these species in longline fisheries is of great concern, as many of their populations have declined greatly in recent years. For example, it is currently estimated that 1.1% of shark species assessed by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature IUCN, are critically endangered, 1.4% are endangered, 4.6% are vulnerable, and 6.4% are near threatened. Six of the seven species of sea turtles are currently listed as endangered or critically endangered by the IUCN. In addition, 61 species of seabirds are incidentally captured in longline fisheries, including 26 species that are threatened with extinction. The ecological impacts of the loss of these species are discussed in further detail below. Ecological impacts of longline fishing. Sharks, tuna, and billfish are considered to be top predators in many ecosystems, playing a critical role in their structure and function. The loss of sharks has been shown to negatively impact several ecosystems. For example, the loss of sharks can lead to changes in the abundance of their prey species, which can lead to a cascade of other trophic level impacts in the ecosystem. The reduction in biomass of tuners and billfish can result in similar changes to the ecosystem. In addition, behavioral changes, such as changes to the activity level of prey six species, the diet, and or habitat utilization can be caused by the loss of sharks. 
Sea turtle bycatch is problematic primarily in the tropics and subtropics. Sea turtles with hard shells tend to bite baited longline hooks resulting in their capture. Leatherback turtles, however, rather than ingesting baited hooks, tend to get caught by becoming foul hooked on the body and entangled. Seabirds are typically caught during the setting process, primarily in fisheries that occur in higher latitudes. Seabirds become hooked or entangled while trying to remove the bait, are dragged underwater, and subsequently drown as the gear sinks. Marine mammals, toothed whales, and, less frequently, baleen whales are occasionally entangled and hooked, which can result in injury and mortality. Interactions with pinnipeds may also occur in coastal longline fisheries. For example, the Hawaii longline fishery had occasional captures of Hawaiian monk seals, Monarchus shounds landing, prior to the adoption of a closed area around the Hawaii.